Liberty or Death, The American Insurrection, the new volume, the fifth volume in the Co-In system, Counter-Insurgency, a system that uh, manages to capture, indeed, the very complex, intricate topic of counter-insurgency as different from traditional military conflict, as an entanglement of political factors, economic factors, social factors, and, 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 and unequal forces that are uh, fighting against each other on a long span of time for overall control of a territory. Uh, we've seen that in previous uh, games in the coin system that depict the contemporary events. This is the first time that the system has been applied to events that precede uh, the uh, 20th century or the 21st even. Some of the coin games are really about contemporary stuff. One is about uh, modern Afghanistan. So I was very curious. I was really, 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 really curious to see how the how it would work because I really like uh, the American Revolutionary War as a topic. I really like the coin system. I never thought of the two of them getting together. So when this showed up in the mail, I was very curious and excited. So um, in this review, I'm gonna show you the game and I'm gonna tell you about the many ideas and concepts behind the game and how it plays. But I'm not gonna give you a tutorial. I'm not gonna actually get into the details of how the overall system works. I assume uh, if you're interested in this game that you have heard about the system before you know the basic nuts and bolts of the system so that in this way I can mainly talk about things that are specific to this game. Uh, implementations of general ideas that uh, have a different flavor personality in this game. I'm gonna review liberty or death and what makes it its own thing, what makes it a different implementation of the system from other installments and if you want to know more about the system there's a lot of information out there. There are several videos including my own ones uh, about previous games in the system. Now without further ado let's talk about liberty or death. Here's the map of the game which is a mounted board and oh my gosh it is a real thing of beauty. Just look at it. It just looks so neat. I like the colors, I like the art, and also I like the fact that differently from other games in the coin uh, system, this one doesn't have a net of roads, uh, which simplifies gameplay because there are only two main types of spaces here, which are cities and provinces. So unless you see a picture like that one, all the other spaces are provinces and you move from province to province. You do not have to worry about roads and being on a road and stuff like that. Which simplifies gameplay and also at the same time it gives some more organic, uh, uh, more appealing look to the map itself. So really nice board, really nice looking. You have four parties in the game, Indians and British, that work together as a faction and American Patriots and French that work together as another faction. So actually it works really well if you're playing the game as a two-player game with simply each player controlling one of the factions. Indians have war parties represented by these species. War parties can be underground or active depending on which side of the cylinder is up and also they have villages their goal is to help the British in in uh, preventing well preventing is not the right word but stopping the rebellion and also they're trying to put down as many villages as they can one of their victory conditions relies on that the British have three types of pieces. They have forts which represent resources and it allows them to recruit people faster. They also have British regulars, very powerful soldiers, and the Tories. These are not as powerful combatants as the regular but they're still necessary to uh, affect the level of support on the map. We have the Americans that can be continentals, so the military units, or they can be militia and just like the war path, the war parties of the Indians, they can be underground or active. And finally we have the French. The French 
uh, only have one type of wooden unit, which is their French regulars, so the soldiers of the army, but they also have three markers which show a squadron on one side and a blockade symbol on another. When they acquire these, usually they place them in this area of the board here, the West Indies, there's a special area, there's special rules about it, and when they become available from the West Indies, they can be placed to blockade cities, and that uh, really prevents the British player from doing, well, a lot of things. Uh, you, can't, uh, you can't really function well when a city is blockaded. There are a couple of restrictions, only some pieces can go to the West Indies, the Indians can never go to cities, things like that. So, as for the parties, each party, I mean, each side also has a brilliant stroke card, such as this one, with the exception of the French, the French have two. The brilliant stroke card, when you play it, it allows you to execute some extra stuff, it has a lot of interesting um, actions that you can do, it's really powerful, it also annuls the events that is resolved right now, that should be resolved, you have however to be eligible, to be one of the eligible players to be able to play the brilliant stroke. The French player has two brilliant stroke or two space cards of this kind. When it's a brilliant stroke that works exactly like these ones, you play it and you perform the special stuff that is printed here. But there's also this other card, which is the Treaty of Alliance. Before this card is played, the French player has serious limitations. The French player really cannot do much at the beginning, mainly uh, can prepare for war by putting French regulars from the unavailable box into the available box on the map and also can send aid to the Americans, sending resources, helping in training um, militia, gathering militia, training continentals, so simply the French is helping. The uh, American player, the American pattern needs to show, well, that he's serious about this rebellion thing. So actually, uh, there is a certain number of casualties, uh, the total, the cumulative British casualties, plus the available blockades that the French player has, plus the number of soldiers uh, that uh, the French player made available needs to be over 15 for the French player to be able to play this card and to fully commit to the war. I really like it, it's very historical, precisely it shows the indecision of France at the beginning and whether or not to support the American Revolution and George Washington needed to show that that was a serious thing. Here the American player needs to inflict some damage, some casualties on the uh, British player to be able to do so. So the Americans find themselves in a very historical dilemma. George Washington is outnumbered, would do better by avoiding direct conflict, moving into, um, into vast areas and build support there, leave temporarily uh, the British there, take control of the cities, doing other stuff like sabotage and build a lot of support somewhere else in the country. But the problem is that without the help of the French, um, the American player is going to have a very hard time. So the American player will want to stay away, but needs to inflict some casualties, needs to draw the British into some confrontations uh, here and there to uh, increase the total level of British casualties so that the French realize that this is some, this is some serious stuff and uh, the French help out. Each side also has leaders, this is another interesting thing. Each side actually has several leaders, the leaders may change throughout the game, uh, with the exception of Washington, the Americans only have Washington and he stays there for the entire game. All other leaders may be changed in certain circumstances and these leaders are unique characters, as you can see for example there are multiple ones for the British and they have different special powers, special abilities and here I have a card if you want to stop pause and read the card so you know what the leaders do the general engine of the game is uh, the same that you have in other coin games if you play those you're familiar with the idea of a deck of events car event cards that are shuffled together and that have some special cards shuffled in in specific bands so that they are separated from one another 
here you basically form packets of 10 and then you place a special card you shuffle it together with one of the bottom four so you will have packets of 11 cards and the special card will be one of the last five cards and these special cards simply the special cards trigger a special round in which you score you gather resources you adjust support etc etc as in other coin games, there will be a card available and visible, which is the card that is presently being resolved. And also you flip another card, so you see one card ahead. Once this is resolved, then you simply replace that with that one. There is, however, an interesting twist here. Again, here the special card where you interrupt the regular flow of the game to score, to support, so, and stuff like that. Here, that special card is the Winter Quarters, but when the Winter Quarters is revealed, it's not like in other games that you know it will get there, so you resolve this card, and then next you resolve this one. As soon as this one is flipped face up, this should be the active one. Actually, they're swapped, so the Winter hits immediately that is if you haven't seen winter in a while you know it's gonna it's gonna hit soon but uh, when it does you do not have a round to figure it out in advance you will not know around the head when you had the winter quarters winter quarters means that you need to show that your troops are in supply again your gas resources just support um the the both the american player and the english player suffer some quote-unquote casualties due to desertions there are a lot of interesting things that happen then but the overall uh the overall engine remains the same that the game is uh, driven by cards. Cards uh, have an order that will tell you the order in which the players can act, but usually only two players will be eligible to act in each given round, and you have events. Usually they are phrased in two different ways, and one phrasing benefits one faction, and the other phrasing benefits the other player. So. When you're one of the eligible factions, uh, because your marker is in the eligible box, here we go. When you're one of the eligible players, one of the eligible factions, you can choose to do one of several things. If you're the first faction that is eligible, say here would be the Indians, you can choose to perform only a command or to perform a command and a special activity or to perform the event on the card depending on what the first eligible player did the second player has different options for example if the first player performed an event then the second player can do a lot of stuff because can do can perform a regular command plus a special activity if the first player was kind of like restrained a little bit with only a command then also the second faction is restricted and the second faction only gets to perform a limited command which is actually is still a command uh, but you can only concentrate in a single layer you cannot affect multiple areas whereas with a regular command you can perform an action and affect the multiple areas if you have command and special activity, then the other player can perform the event, which is a pretty powerful or a limited command. Basically, uh, the first if the first player does something cool, then the second player gets a chance of doing something cool too. If the first player was a little more uh, calm, then the second player also has restrictions and cannot do much or not as much as with other options. The players that just acted become ineligible. The next card it becomes the active one you go through in this case the first symbol to show among the eligible is american patches so now the american go and they choose what they want to do you can also pass so you remain eligible and you also gain resources by passing basic engine you should know it but i thought i would review it for you now as in other uh, games, these all, all the games of uh, the coin system, what happens when you have one of these commands is that you can choose among a list of options. And you have these excellent player aids giving you the options for all players. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to go through all of the options. Probably I'll just give you a real quick sense. 
of what they do is just a list of things. Master allows you to get new troops on the on the map. This is the uh, list of options for the um, British player. Garrison allows you to move people to the to uh, to cities. March allows you to move people on the map. Battle. Battle is a new thing. Do you still have forms of combat that work uh, like in previous games where sometimes you simply roll a single die or sometimes you simply inflict uh, a standard number of damage points to the opponent, uh, things like you know you do in skirmish. Uh, you have uh, an action the British called Common Cause which allows you to utilize war parties as if they were tours. It's one of the many effects that causes synergy. For example, also the Patriot player can move French pieces and vice versa. Naval pressure, it allows the British player to get some extra resources or actually to fight against the uh, French blockade. But I skipped battle and I'll talk about that later. Again, just to give a quick rundown of the possible actions. Rally for the American Patriots. Rally, you get more people, march, you move them. Battle, you start again a battle, which is a more involved and large-scale fight than with a regular skirmish. Rebel Rousing, it is when you get to activate underground militia, so it becomes more vulnerable, but it also gets to shift uh, the support to active opposition for against the British government, and you also get to place a propaganda marker in the air that you activated, and the propaganda marker makes it harder for the opponent to adjust the level of, of support there. Persuasion is when you gain resources, partisans allows you to uh, use militia to strike royalist pieces, so you activate underground militia and you remove royalists or other actions along those lines. Skirmish allows you to inflict damage to the opponent on a small scale. Now the French is a player with a lot of limitations at the beginning. Early on, before you commit um, to full scale, you can only perform this action, this action, and this action here. As you can see, this one allows you to send uh, resources. So it allows you to send resources to the American patches. This allows you to build their units militia or continentals, but only in northern provinces. Later, you can finally perform a lot more actions. Actually, this is an action from before La Guerre, which is to make unavailable units available. Later, you can skirmish, you can apply naval pressure, placing blockades, you can muster, that is, bring units to the New World, you move them once they are there, and again there is synergy, and again you start a battle. As for the Indians, they can gather, that's their version of muster pretty much, march, which is to move, scout, allows the war parties to move British cubes and skirmish, again one of these examples of, of synergy among sides of a faction. Raid, it allows you to put a raid marker on the board and the raid marker uh, makes it harder for other people later to stop uh, to to change the level of support and when you do place it you uh, reveal you activate an underground war party and also you shift your position level by one towards neutral the indians may also trade which allows them to gain resources they can go on the war path which is a form of aggression of course Plunder allows them to take resources from the patches and, well, victory check, that is not an action. Of the four sites, the one that is uh, the most anomalous is the French one because it has different lists of actions based on when things are happening. As for battle, frets not, uh, it is a little convoluted, but there is a play range, which is a great help. Also, it makes it look much scarier than it has. Pretty much, that means that uh, you count how many units you have in a battle. There are a couple of rules and restrictions. I don't want to get into too many details. You know, like the opponent, I mean, the attacker, the defender, they have slightly different rules about who is going to get committed. But what happens at the end is that you will have 
armies facing each other there may be other units in there for example militia and the militia you may choose to commit them to the fight uh, by revealing them or you keep them underground and they do not participate to the fight directly but they lend modifiers and modifiers are really important in a battle so when a battle is triggered you need to count how many units are actually involved in the battle then you determine the number of dice that you roll you divide the number of units that you have in the fight by three and you obtain the number of d3s that you will roll uh, d3s they're d6s but they only show numbers from one two three each player can have up to three dice in the fight so then you simply roll and the total that you rolled is the number of casualties that you inflict after that is modified taking into account uh, several several factors uh, attack uh, factors that will modify the loss level of the defender or that of the attacker for example uh, having or is the, 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 the I want to show you the the militia the unrevealed militia of course no I can't find it but if you stop the there you go at least one attacking side piece is underground then the uh, defender loses a plus one things like that so really squadron attacking in the west in the defending forts all of these things will modify the level of losses once losses are uh, determined roll do i roll plus modifiers players need to remove pieces in a certain order not all pieces are born equal when it comes to removing them and then if in the battle at least uh, one side lost two pieces or more you can determine a winner mega winner in the win the day phase and in a tie in a tie the defender is the player that wins the day and there are advantages in winning the day that is in winning a battle of large proportions because it allows you to shift the support or position level to your advantage for by a number of levels equal to half the pieces that the loser removes rounded down so that is pretty neat news of your victory spreads around and that is good for you as for victory conditions uh, you need for your your faction to have considerable more support than the opponent for the faction to win and also you need the cumulative casualties of the opponent to be higher than yours if you have that then you your faction wins and then within the faction you determine by following other rules and uh, meeting other conditions which of the two participants in that faction is going to be the winner and the the uh indian player wins within the british faction if uh, he has a number of villages which is high enough to match and exceed the number of american forts and uh, victory for the Americans is based again by comparing it to the number of the comparing their force to the number of villages that the Indian player has. Allow me to be abundantly clear from the very beginning of my conclusions. Liberty or, De or Death is an excellent game, simply excellent. Definitely up there with my favorite game in the coin system fire in the lake or i should say with my other favorite game because now um, this one is a strong contender uh maybe even better maybe i like this one even better only time will tell but for now i'm really pretty taken by this design the quality of the design the quality of the components you've seen that's great top notch uh, like in previous coin games the quality of the design is absolutely impressive now this being said um the game is a coin game because it is based on the same mechanics of previous coin games but i didn't get the feeling of counterinsurgency as much somehow it felt a little more of a traditional um, traditional conflict a little more military oriented with yes political factors but something something was missing in the counterinsurgency department 
this being said, I'm not saying this is a negative. I want to give you a sense of the kind of flavor, the kind of feel that the game has, because to me it's not a negative. I have a lot of games here that are not about counterinsurgency and they're still pretty awesome. This happens to be one such game. It feels to me that it's a game that was built on a system originally designed for counterinsurgency. Here, something different is happening. Something different is happening. It feels more of a traditional uh, conflict. Uh, which is fine, is what I would expect in a conflict depicting um, 18th century warfare, which is a little more stiff than, uh, than say, something that happens in the jungle of Vietnam. Uh, a little more stiff in terms of doctrine, in terms of alignment, you, the battles, you do have the sense uh, that you're aligning, this, setting up these large armies, you're performing linear tactics, uh, the time it takes to build up your forces, the effort it takes to move them around, and so on and so forth. For the people from Europe, the effort that it takes to bring forces to that side of the pond. All of these things are work very well, have a very strong period feel to them. Again, somehow it feels more like um, a traditional war game with a coin twist to it than a strict uh, or an intensely counterinsurgency based game. Which again, I can't stress this enough, I'm not saying this is a negative in any sense because the game I like, I like, I like very much. Um, the factions, uh, the, the elements that form the two factions, Indians and British on one side and Patriots and French, are pretty cohesive and again I feel here there is a difference from uh, previous games because these two uh, parties forming each faction, they do feel very cohesive, they seem to me to have a stronger synergy, let's say, um, the previous, the communist side had in Fire in the Lake. It really feels like they can work together much better, they have an incentive in working together uh, much more. As a French player at the beginning, all you can do is pretty much to help yourself by building up forces, which you cannot always do because you cannot always perform that special action, and your standard idea is simply the standard action is to help the Americans. So you're gonna coordinate with them. At the same time, you're keeping an eye on them because you don't want them to get too much ahead because possibly you want your faction to win and then you want you to have the better the better uh, position in there. Things like this. Uh, at the end, you are pursuing your own agenda, but there really is a strong cooperation between the two the two uh, parties that form up each uh, each faction, and I really like that. Actually, this also feels like it really could be a a two player game. It will work very well in that faction. Um, simply, well, each of the two players will play uh, the two parties in each faction. Actually, some of the people that I played the game with uh, made that remark that it almost felt like a two-player game that had been split into four factions rather than the opposite of a four-player game that also works for two. I don't know. I'm not hundred percent sure. It's you know, to me that's really the the, the aspects. Uh, two player, four players, um, they're pretty balanced, I don't feel like one of them is the predominant one. That is, even if you're playing the four sides with four players, in some sides somehow feel a little more restricted, like the Indians and the and the French, they have more constraints, and yet they don't feel like, you know, the, the sucker side, the side that doesn't really get to do much, or doesn't get to have fun. Uh, there's still stuff that these two sides can do, it's... Uh, they may be constrained in certain ways, but they're also very original, meaning that they work in different ways from the two main uh, sides, which also work differently from one another, but not in such a radical way as, as the French, with all the limitations that they have, and then the, the ability to control the sea, or to affect the sea, and the Indians that have all of their special restrictions, but then also ability special areas in which they, they dominate uh, in the West, uh, um, different ways that they can use their villages, uh, their special actions to raid. So they, they're definitely, the, the French and the Indian side may be a little more um, limited, but they are not loser sides per se, uh, they are not sides that are locked out of victory and most important to me they're not sides that are sides that uh, uh, the system prevents from having as much fun as the other two sides. 
the, the the game just works very well. I love pretty much everything in it. I love every step of the winter quarters and I, I didn't go in detail because I don't want to make it sound too fiddly. I like the new uh, ideas that have been applied to the old system. I find that some of the elements from the old system have been streamlined. For example, the map, you do not have the routes. And that allowed the design to add some other stuff, or some, some new rules that are specific to this, uh, to this to this specific context of this historical scenario so you have more chrome and more theme but at the same time the, the, the level of complexity is well balanced it's not more overwhelming or extremely more streamlined than previous games level of complexity to me is that of an average game in the system but the level of fun the level of excitement the level of subtlety that you have is really really interesting um cards for the events you have a lot of those cards so you will not see all of those you know games so replay value there as in other coin games also here you have the bots you have flow charts that will allow you to play any one of the sites um using an ai you simply go through the flow chart and you know what that site does when the site activates giving you the possibility to play the game with zero players so if you simply use all um all four ais for the for the four sites you simply see how the ais fight it out who is gonna win you simply follow the narrative but in most cases you will want to play say one one faction with two parties and have that a two parties being organized by bots it's also entirely possible you play one one faction or or one party identify with emotionally then you play the other one as your own enemy you simply act all of the sides it's possible to play solitaire that way too uh, with the limited knowledge that you have due to the cards i really love the way the the swap in the winter card works that's to me is excellent with the limited knowledge that you have there and a lot of other factors so some the die rolls etc etc it's perfectly possible to play the game in uh, uh, in solitaire and still enjoy it of course the game shines when you have four players one for each faction but again this it's easily and can definitely be in a played and enjoyable way by two players liberty or death absolutely outstanding excellent design great product from all points of view from production values uh, to design fun replay value absolutely my highest recommendation give a try to liberty or death even if you never tried the coin system before the system that is very different from other systems so it may take you a while to digest it if you never played it but it's a system that is extremely rewarding and this is really a game whose replay value is so astounding that you can play it for a long time before the game starts feeling even remotely samey so there's it's a good game per se, I would say it's more than a good game, it's an excellent game, and also is a very good value for your money because of the very high value in replay that you have here. Liberty of Death by GMT, simply a wonderful game.